Welcome to Friday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony. Thank you for joining us here at the end of week number nine in our series, Faith Life. This week we've been beginning talking about the two primary hinges on which the door of faith swings. And this week we've been really centering in on the first one, which is believing with the heart. We've already gone through a number of scriptures, number of explanations, illustrations that explain exactly what believing with the heart means. And again, what is believing with the heart? Well, in order to understand what believing with the heart is, we, all, we have to understand what the heart is. Now, what is the heart according to the scriptures? Well, we found out that the heart is the spirit and the soul together. It's not just your spirit. If that were the case, there would be no unbelief there. There'd be no doubting there. But because you have another part of your being in there, your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions, of course, that means you can choose to believe the right thing or the wrong thing. You can choose to focus or aim your faith gun at something that is that is right, is going to produce good results, or something that is wrong is going to produce the bad results. And of course, we need to understand this in order to point our faith gun in the right direction. And of course, believing is the verb. It's the action verb of where you're pointing that faith gun, that substance of faith in your life. And so we have to do something with our soul. We have to do something with our mind, our will, and emotions. That has to be renewed with the new covenant. That has to be renewed with new covenant believing and thinking. Now, uh, we went over a couple of things yesterday, uh, some examples. First of all, we talked about Thomas. We referred to him as Doubting Thomas, unfortunately. But he is one of the disciples of Jesus. And we found out that he went from unbelieving to believing. Now, unbelieving doesn't mean that he was not believing anything. It just meant he was believing the wrong thing. He said, unless I can see, unless I can feel, you know, the, the nail prints in Jesus' hands and his side or his feet and the, and the spear hole in his side, he said, I will not believe. He didn't say I couldn't believe. He said, I will not believe. So we go from unbelieving to believing when we choose to believe the promises of God, the Word of God, over what we see and what we feel externally. We do not allow the flesh and natural circumstances and really other people's opinions to dictate what we're going to believe. We're going to take God's Word and put it on the throne of our life. It needs to be predominant in our heart. And see, we can move from unbelieving to believing. We also found out that Abraham came to the place of being fully persuaded. How did he become fully persuaded that what God had promised he was also able to perform? Was there all of a sudden physical evidence outward that would, would indicate that he was going to be the father of many nations? Not at all. In fact, every candle he put on the cake, every birthday, he had another candle in there that he had to blow out. And it was indicating that natural hope was not only, it was not only vague, it was gone at 100 years old with a nine-year-old wife. But notice he did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief. He, did, he chose as an act of his will, as part of your soul, he chose to focus and attend to the promises of God and let that dictate where he was going to point his faith gun. Now, we're going to look at uh, some scriptures today of how we get to our, our heart, to that place of being fully assured, of fully persuaded, going from unbelieving to believing. So let's go over to the 39th Psalm, Psalm 39 today. Powerful scripture right here, Psalm 39. Now, this scripture right here, this verse, you can use this positive or negative. In fact, uh, you know, if you stew in your own juices long enough and think about all the bad things that somebody's done to you, you can get all fired up about that. And you can start speaking and acting in a way that's ungodly. But, of course, the same principle would also could also be applied to changing our heart from a place of unbelieving to believing, to producing positive results and bearing the fruit of the inside of the spirit. Now, notice here in Psalm 39, verse 3, it says, My heart was hot within me. Now, that didn't mean he had heartburn, okay, <laughs> physically or naturally. He's talking about his heart, the core of his being, his spirit, and his soul. 
He said, my heart is hot within me. While I was musing, that word musing, we don't use that word very much, but the word musing means to meditate or to think about. Okay, to meditate or to think about, to ponder. Okay, so he says, while I was musing, meditating, thinking about, pondering, the fire burned and then I spoke with my tongue. Notice that he released words out of his mouth once that fire was brought to a place of it was burning big time. His heart was hot. In other words, what he was thinking about was dominating his heart. Now again, that can be used negatively or positively, but if we want to produce the God kind of results, if we want to, if we want to get the results that God promises in His Word, of course, we're going to have to take the Word and meditate on them to the point that it, 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 there's a fire that, that is kindled in our heart, and then it burns, and then our heart becomes hot, and then all of a sudden we express it through words and actions faith is released, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring some things into manifestation in our life. That's powerful right there. Now, with that in mind, let's look over to the New Testament, to Luke chapter 24. Luke, the 24th chapter. This is right after Jesus was raised from the dead. In fact, it was the evening of that day. Jesus was raised from the dead on the third day in the morning. But in the evening, two of his disciples were going from Jerusalem on the road to Emmaus. And then Jesus just joins in with them, and they didn't recognize who Jesus was. And he had a little conversation with them. But couple that with what we just found out. How, we, how, are our, how is our heart coming from a place of unbelieving to believing? To a place of being eh, sort of persuaded to a place of being fully persuaded. Okay, that's what we want to get to. So let's begin. Let's just read one verse, just sake of time. I encourage you to read all of this in its entirety. We just don't have time on this podcast today. But verse number 17, Jesus had already uh, joined himself to them, walking along with them. Verse 17, and he said to these disciples, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Now, notice they're walking with the resurrected Jesus, but they're sad. Now, why are they sad? Because, first of all, they don't recognize this person walking with them. Second of all, they don't believe the reports that they have already received how Jesus was raised from the dead. He was not in that tomb anymore. So notice they were still in a place of sadness. What does that tell us right there? Their countenance was drooping. They were, you know, they were, they were sad about things. And he was asking them, why, why are you talking this way? Why is your conversation and your countenance all sad. Why are you in the mully grub, so to speak? Why are you singing the blues? Notice that Jesus recognized that their thinking and their believing wasn't right. It wasn't in line with the truth. The truth was walking along with them and they just didn't believe it. Now let's skip on down here to verse number uh, 24 or 25. And then uh, Jesus said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe. Notice right there. Slow of heart. Now these are disciples that we're talking about. That they were slow of heart to believe. In other words, there was, some, there was a lot of unbelief in there. They had not gone from unbelief to belief. They had not gone from a place of being, eh, yeah, we're hearing some stuff, to a place of, yeah, that's the truth, and I'm fully persuaded about it. So he said, O oh, foolish ones and soul of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. Now verse 27, key verse. And beginning at Moses, that's the law, that's the Old Testament, and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. I want you to see there that he opened the word of God and began to expound. That means to explain. That means that he was explaining to a point that they come to a place of revelation and understanding, not just about the scriptures themselves, but about the person in the scriptures, Jesus. See, Jesus is the centerpiece of our faith. We don't just have faith in something. We have faith in someone. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Hebrews 12 tells us. So he says, he took the time while he was walking along. I love to have been on that conversation. Well, you know what? We have this conversation. 
It's, it's the epistles of Paul primarily. That's the explanation of this. But he said he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now again, let's just skip on down for the sake of time to verse 32. They had gone in. They got as far as they were going to go. They sat down. They were having communion with the Lord. He broke bread and all of a sudden their, their recognition, their eyes were open and they recognized Jesus for who he was. Now notice in verse number uh, 32, and they said to one another, Jesus disappeared, vanished after that happened. And they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us while he taught with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? So notice what was going on as Jesus was expounding the scriptures concerning himself. What happened? Their heart began to burn within them. He's, they said, did not our heart burn within us? Again, this is not heart burn like you would get from eating you know, too many tacos or something like that. This is heart burn that you get in a good way because all of a sudden your, your soul is accepting the reality of this resurrected person of Jesus and all that he brings to us. And notice, he said, they said, did not our heart burn within us as he taught with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures, the word of God to us. Notice they went from slow of heart to believe to a heart burning. How? Through a revelation and an understanding of who Jesus is. A recognition of who Jesus is. The author and the finish of our faith. And that comes from the word of God. Boy, that's powerful right there. You know, we can believe beyond our natural circumstances. In fact, we can come to a place where our heart is burning within us. That's what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to come to that place where we come, go from unbelieving to believing. From just being, yeah, I've heard about that, to a place of being fully persuaded. He wants it to affect our life in such a degree that we have the peace that passes all understanding, that we have joy unspeakable and full of glory. In other words, our soul comes in a line with the Word, just like I gave that illustration. And all the peace, the joy, the life, the faith, confidence, boldness, everything that God's put in our spirit is being is now flowing through and coming to our outward person and manifesting fruit. Man, that is power. That is awesome right there. Look real quickly to Acts chapter 27. I just got a couple of minutes. I just want to point this out. This is a story we've already read in this series a couple of times. This is about uh, Paul and they, you know they went against his advice and they went on to set sail and they got caught in a hurricane proportion wind called Eurocladon, if you remember that. And they were in a third day of a 14 day storm at this point. And I tell you, they were throwing stuff overboard, left and right. And they had come to the place, they'd given up all hope. They'd given up all hope. Natural hope was gone that they would ever survive this thing. But I want you to see here in verse number 25 that he says, uh, Paul gets up and, and, and speaks to them. Actually, let's go back. Uh, verse 22 is where we want to start. Verse 22, and he says, And now I urge you to take heart. You know, you can lose heart by looking at the externals. That's what was going on in that ship that day. But notice that he said, I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God of whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar, and indeed God has granted you all those who sell with you. Verse 25, Therefore take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be for me just as it was told me. I want you to notice that Paul took heart. He went against hope and believed hope. Why? Because of words that were spoken to him. And he began to dwell on the words more in the external pressures and the storm that was raging about him. And you know what? As a preacher, he got up and told him the same thing. I'm telling you today, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what kind of pressure you're facing or what kind of storm you're in the middle of right now. But I can tell you, you can take the Word of God and take heart right now. Don't lose heart by looking at the scene. Take heart by looking at the things which are unseen. The unchangeable, eternal things of God and of His Word. And that's what he's telling him right here. In fact, one translation says about take heart, it said cheer up. 
he told them to cheer up. He said, don't be afraid. You know, fear, is come, fear and anxiety come in our life and we lose heart by looking at the wrong thing, believing the wrong thing. That would be unbelief. But how are we to take heart? How are we to get strong? How are we to become courageous? How are we, to go to, how are we going to cheer up? How is our heart going to be strong in the middle of this? How is our faith going to be strong in the middle of this? By taking God's Word and believing it. Mixing our faith with it and saying, that's the truth. That's what I'm going to consider. That's what I'm going to focus on. That's what I'm going to attend to. So we can go from losing heart to taking heart by focusing our faith on the Word of the living God. Good news to end this week. If you'd like additional resources and materials, Go to TonyCowan.org and we will see you next week.